It's Friday, time for another fun size art lesson. I've gotten lots of questions about brushes and how to care for them, but before we get into brush care and how to resuscitate dead brushes, we're going to talk about all the different types and how to use them. I'm going to split screen this so you can see the brush on its own as well as how I'm using it on an actual painting. Today I'm going to paint my friend's dog, Banjo. I'm using watercolor on the left and gouache on the right, but most of these brush styles are going to be applicable for standard paint types like oil, acrylic, watercolor, and gouache. First up is a flat wash brush. This type of brush comes in a variety of sizes and is used to get nice solid coverage over larger spaces than what you may use a pointed round brush for. Since the painting I'm working on is only eight by 10 inches, I'm only using a one inch wide brush, but you can get them up to several inches. Next brush is a smaller version of the first known as a flat or shader brush. This flat brush is a size eight. It's a square shape and can be used in all sorts of ways. It's often used for shading and blending, but also works well to chisel in areas. It's wide, but not thick. So I often turn it sideways and use the brush to make lines, especially for animal fur. You may also find a bright brush, which has the same basic shape as a flat, just trimmed shorter. The flat brush's cousin is a filbert. Some people also call this an oval flat or a cat's tongue. A filbert has a much more oval shape and is fantastic for more rounded areas, especially things like flower petals and trees. It has a much softer edge than a flat, but even if you don't have a filbert brush, if you use a flat brush long enough, it will turn into a filbert as the corners wear away. If you are painting on canvas, this happens faster as the canvas wears down the corners. The most common type of brush you will likely see is a pointed round. Depending on how detailed you work, it's nice to have a variety of sizes. Here I have a 1, 2, 6, and 10, but they are available much larger. Rounds are thicker at the bottom and very fine at the tip, so you can use them for anything from larger washes of color to fine lines and detail work. Rounds are better for thinner amounts of paint instead of heavy application, but they are the most utilized art brush. This type of brush is an oval mop. I use this brush for watercolor and gouache, but not really for oils, as most oil brushes are a stiffer bristle type of brush. Mop brushes are much softer than the flat brush that I used earlier and are good for soft washes or blending. I've decided I want to change the background color of this painting, so I'm using the mop brush for a wide, soft coverage. This next brush is called a dagger or a striping brush. Though this brush isn't always necessary, it is really helpful for painting long grasses, hair, and animal fur. This basic style of brush is also used for painting very precise stripes on things like guitars and motorcycles. The longer the brush itself is, the more paint it can hold, so you can get a long, uninterrupted stripe without having to reload your brush. The last brush I'm using today is a fine liner brush. You definitely wouldn't want to do an entire painting with a brush so small, but they are my favorite for fine animal fur, whiskers, individual human hairs, eyelashes, insect antenna, and other teeny tiny details. While I'm wrapping this painting up, I'll show you a couple more brushes that I have, but didn't use today on Banjo. This brush isn't super common, but I do love it. It's a half inch wildlife brush. Not many brush makers even make this brush. This one is actually a Bob Ross brush made by Dixon, the same company that makes Ticonderoga pencils. It makes a lovely series of animal fur without having to paint individual hairs. I wouldn't use it for an entire painting, but it's good for the initial layers of fur to start building upon. Another brush I didn't use today, since it is more commonly used for oil, is a fan brush. It's a little more difficult to use them for water-based mediums like acrylic, watercolor, and gouache, since the paint will often dry too quickly to even blend with this brush. But I frequently use them with oils to paint things like clouds, water, portraits, and landscapes. They're also particularly handy for blocking in foliage on trees. If at all possible, buy your brushes in person, especially if it is the first time buying a particular brand or style. All round brushes online look pretty much the same, and it's hard sometimes to envision the size differences. I also really like to feel the brushes for myself for handle shape, weight, brush texture, and quality. You want the bristles to be tightly packed so the bristles don't shed into your painting. I hope this has helped you figure out what type of brushes will work best for your preferred painting medium and style. 
But honestly, the best way to learn what brushes are right for you is by doing. You could watch me all day long. You could watch a thousand other videos from other creators, but nothing compares to having the brush in your hand and experimenting with it yourself. If this has helped you in any way, I'd appreciate a like and follow. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you'd like to see next and happy painting.